Jesus' historic confrontation with the Pharisees was the personification of the prophetic call to identify and expose a counterfeit religious system which is still virulent today. This confrontation is at the very heart of the Gospels because it posits a powerful and prestigious institutionalized form of scriptural nullification Mark 7, 5, and the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders? There's the Talmud mentioned in the New Testament. The traditions of the elders. The traditions of the elders at this time was not in written form. Because why? Israel had not yet become so corrupt that they nailed the Messiah of Israel to a cross. Israel still had a chance. They hadn't committed that cosmic crime. It used to be considered a cosmic crime. It used to be considered the greatest ontological crime of all time until Auschwitz. Now Auschwitz is the greatest ontological crime and Calvary is a distant second. Talmud is the holiest book of Judaism, not the Old Testament. The Talmud contradicts, nullifies, and creates loopholes in the Word of God. The Talmud is not the Word of God. Judaism constitutes the worship of the Judaic male as God. Criticism of Israelites by prophets like Isaiah is condemned by the rabbis. This is Tractate Yebamoth 49b, discussing the execution of the prophet Isaiah as a penalty for having said of the Israelite people they had unclean lips. This is what the oral tradition of the Pharisees talk about prophet Isaiah. That he was killed and he got what he deserved for offending the Israelites by daring to say they had unclean lips. Now, Jesus Christ knew the oral tradition thoroughly. And this is what he was referring to when he stated in Matthew 23, 31, you are witnesses against yourselves concerning the murder of the prophets. They're witnessing against themselves. The Gemara, which is of incomparable merit for study, gets roughly 50% of the Judaic students' attention. And the Mishnah, which represents the oral tradition of the Pharisees, which Jesus confronted, gets about 30%. With the Bible, a distant third at 20%. So you can see what I'm talking about here. God's word is not the primary focus. The Talmud isn't a universal love religion. The love is exclusively reserved for Adam. And throughout the Talmudic texts, it is repeated, only Jews are Adam. So how could the Talmud possibly say what Steven Spielberg and millions of moviegoers and hundreds of thousands of school children think that it says? Let's see what it really says. These were the laws of Noah, the biblical Noah. That's fine. The rabbis hate Noah. They say he was a drunk. They make fun of him. And then they have all that Midrashic nonsense about his son sodomizing him on board Noah's Ark. And that's how we have the racial animus for black people as subhumans. It come, the Bible doesn't say that uh, Canaan or Ham, what race they were. The rabbis said they were black. They don't care about Noah. Their Noahide laws are the Talmudic Noahide laws, different from the Bible. That's where we're going to have these hate crime things come through. And it's going to be very, very effective because people are going to think it's biblically based. Here is the root. If people who call themselves Christians want to believe that Judaism is a Bible-based elder brother of Christianity, then they ought to realize that this is the real face of Judaism at its most recondite and clandestine form. And if this is what they want to embrace out of fear of money and power, then they ought to at least leave Jesus Christ and St. Paul the Apostle out of it. Because the Christian martyrs all died at the hands of this diabolism which today has such high prestige in the church world.